Thanks for listening to Uncle Sam's Soccer Podcast, keeping you up to date with the latest in American soccer. And don't forget to subscribe. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Sam's Soccer Podcast. I'm Stephen Jodderand. And I'm Jake Watroba. And on today's episode, it's a special one. We speak with Oliver Vies, the president of Soccer Operation and general manager for Orange County Soccer Club. We talk about COVID-19, USL's return, youth development, and the documentary Path to Glory. Plus, one of the players that is featured in the documentary, Diego Lopez, also speaks with us about USL's return, youth development, and COVID-19. Listeners, follow us on Twitter at Unc Sam Soccer Pod. We always enjoy your feedback and comments, so continue to send them in. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Now, let's get to today's show. Jake, 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 uh, midweek episode here. It's a special one. I'm excited for it. Listeners, how are you doing on this Thursday? And and Jake, we got some special news. Well, we do have some special news, Stephen. Do you want to do you want to make the announcement? I don't know. I think this should be a, a, a tag team here. But uh, we found a third co-host. We're really excited. Welcome, Justin. Sosa, he writes for uh, Scouted Football, covering American youth players. Perfect for today's episode. Follow him at Justin Sosa uh, 99. He's from the New Jersey area. Justin, welcome to Uncle Sam's Soccer Podcast. We are happy to have that third mic filled. What's up, guys? Uh, happy to be here. Um, I'm just excited to kind of get started and start talking about American soccer in, in all ways possible. So this yes. should be fun. Yes. And uh, listeners, on today's episode, it's a special one um, for multiple reasons. We we recently had Oliver uh, Vison not too long ago, Jake. And I, when we when we called up Oliver, we, we were kind of joking around and how gray we all got because of of things happening in the last months. But we, it wasn't too long ago when we spoke to Oliver. No, but it felt like a lifetime ago, Stephen. It, I mean, it was like you said, it was in January. Yeah, but that seems that seems like forever ago. No, it was a great conversation with Oliver this time around, just talking about the club's preparation for the the season ahead, how they've been dealing with COVID, their partnership with uh, Glasgow Rangers and youth development, and, and then this uh, documentary Path to Glory. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we'll talk about the documentary here in a second, but. Justin, obviously your strong suit is youth soccer in this country. What was your kind of, you know, can you tease for the listeners kind of a big takeaway or kind of something the listeners might look out for in this, this interview? Yeah. I mean, I think the one thing that I got from this interview was that we should be really excited about what other USL teams outside of MLS reserve teams are, are doing in terms of, you know, developing youth players and trying to find youth players, whether they be, domestic or international and and really develop them on their own and and create an identity with uh with their teams through players they find yeah absolutely and as jake mentioned there's going to be this documentary called path to glory which will feature on espn uh thursday night tonight uh at 8 30 eastern time just before the Orange County Phoenix game, and this documentary follows six youth international players, three from the U.S., three from Scotland, and their path to professional soccer. And one of those players featured in the documentary is Diego Lopez. He's a U-17 international striker, and we had the pleasure of speaking with him, and you'll hear that interview after Oliver Vies. Now, enough of us chit-chatting. Here's our interview with Oliver Vies that we recorded on July 15th. Hope you enjoy. Joining us right now is the president of soccer operation and general manager of Orange County Soccer Club, Oliver Vies. Oliver, welcome back. Uh, it feels like a lifetime ago when we had you on, but it was just a few months ago. <laughs> Guys, it's great to be back. And yes, it definitely feels like a very long time. As we discussed prior, you know, these last three months, I think, feel for everybody 
Um, it's been an eternity, but how great for USL to be back, uh, to be back playing in the home market, to be on ESPN2, and how exciting for Orange County Soccer Club tomorrow to be on ESPN2 as well, kicking off and resuming our season against Phoenix Rising. Yeah, Oliver, I mean, it's, it's definitely an exciting time for the club and for USL as everything uh, uh, kicks off here this week. Uh, but let's begin with the elephant in the room just regarding the return of sports. How has it been running a club uh, amidst a, a global pandemic? You know, I think it's been challenges that nobody could foresee and really nobody has experienced. And what I can say is that at a, as a club, we wanted to make sure we're taking truly care of our players, of our staff and our fans and our community and our environment. And we have, how we have done that, we have continued to work. We obviously followed proper protocols. It was very difficult on the technical side with the players obviously not being able to train and keep them engaged and motivated. But our technical staff did a fantastic job obviously checking in with them daily, giving recommendations. And a lot of credit also goes to the players that they've truly done it. Uh, it's been difficult, obviously, uh, to get back in full swing and, you know, might make sure we can manage all the expectations. But I can tell you, we've used the time wisely. We worked on many, many things in the technical department, got into more into details, which usually you wouldn't have the time to do so during a busy season. But, of course, we couldn't be more excited to be finally back on the field continue what we started and we feel we have a very very competitive team that can compete for usl cup but while we continue to have players of the absolutely highest caliber but obviously mixing in with a lot a lot of young exciting talents looking at orange county's um schedule for what is now the new regular season um obviously you guys have a have a two-game stretch at home first um but to close out what is you know the group stage essentially you guys are going to be away from home for three games and I was just wondering if you could maybe shed some light on, on how um, the procedures work kind of in traveling uh, and then playing away games for, for Orange County and just for teams in general. Yeah, look, first and foremost, with only having 15 games, right, every game is important. Uh, to start off back-to-back -back games at home, uh, arguably against the best, one of the best teams in the league, is definitely a challenge because we've had some limitation with training in a matter of fact, we haven't even been able to play an 11 aside uh, game, but we're not ever doing looking for excuses because we will be ready tomorrow night. But you have to obviously go through strict protocols, right? And, and the fact that we're playing at home, I think it makes it a little bit easier because going on the road is definitely not, uh, you know, something uh, anybody's looking forward to at the moment traveling. But I will also have to say we're actually pretty fortunate uh, that in our group, and even the game we have in Sacramento, we'll be able to basically take buses and don't have to take planes right now and travel in there because there's obviously definitely probably a little bit of a higher risk if you have to take planes and travel. But regardless, look, everybody understands there's a, there's a little risk involved for what we're doing, but it doesn't uh, you know, overshadow, obviously, the, the joy of being back on the field and, and to do so. So we go again by strict protocols. The league has done a fantastic job laying out protocols, how we get back to playing, how we get into these different markets. And it's up to us now and every single player and every staff member to follow these closely and to obviously try to avoid uh, any any contact or any any movement outside of our bubble that we're trying to keep to the people that we interact daily and make sure, you know, we, we're creating that safe environment for all of us. Oliver, I mean, who's most excited for the return of the sport? I mean, is it the coaching staff or the players? Is it you? I mean, I, just before we recorded, you were very excited for for just to have the matches back. Yeah, I think, look, we're all extremely excited. I think the players, uh, it's almost a relief because, look, let's face it, for players, you know, in their profession when they don't play, you know, it's never good, right? So I would say the enjoyment as a club, the, the from a – from ownership group into the technical staff into the front office, uh, we're overjoyed to have this opportunity to go out there. Obviously, we're also dealing with a lot of challenges. But I think seeing the players, once they get on the field, they're able to take off their mask, interact in some kind of normalcy, where they're out there training again among each other, challenging each other. I would say I think the players are probably the one who are the most excited to be playing again. Now, Oliver, last time we spoke, Orange County SC had recently announced a strategic partnership with Scottish Premiership side Rangers. Can you talk about how that's been unfolding? 
Oh, it's been unfolding exactly the way we expected it. Look, the key to this partnership was from day one that the essence had to be player development. It had to be built on soccer and not on commercial activities, which so many of these partnerships in the past have been built on. So the fact that our players have been training over there, we have some of their players on loan with us, And the interaction that has been on a daily basis with the technical staff and now also with the commercial staff at Rangers, the sharing of best practices, truly it's a partnership that is evolving every single day, but it's also uh, everything we haven't expected because at the end of the day, Glasgow Rangers is a first class uh, historic and very successful club. The people we are working with from the top to the bottom are, are simply incredible, and we could have not asked for a better partner. Yeah, I mean, and as far as uh, player recruitment and youth scouting goes, do you think uh, Orange County and Rangers are kind of going to be able to benefit from um, just being able to scout new areas and, and kind of pick up on on young players that are looking promising either in Scotland or in California? Oh, 100%. You know, for us, it was always important in our pathway structure that we never wanted to be the end piece of a young professional player. We wanted to be a very important piece in the development. And we feel really strongly that the top U.S. talents don't have to leave at age 15 or 16 to Europe because they cannot get the same kind of education back home. So by us preparing these players and now using obviously the Glasgow Rangers, like we did in the off season where our players and went and train over there or Francis Jacobs, who played in the Alcos tournament for them last year and did so magnificently well. So there are these opportunities now where we really are developing players uh, for the future, but also really have players that Glasgow Rangers is sending us that are immediately playing in our first team and showcasing themselves to the American market and different markets. So I think it's a relationship that works both ways and it's mutually beneficial And, you know, in partnerships, when they are mutually beneficial, that's the recipe for success. So, yes, I mean, we're working in full uh, alignment. Is that into the scouting, uh, not only of American talent, but also of global talent, aligning out every aspect of our technical department. And obviously also are working closely together um, for the USL Academy that is going to start next year, which I think will add, add another very important layer to our structure between Glasgow Rangers and Orange County Soccer Club. How has how has COVID-19 affected this partnership? Has it stalled any, I mean, obviously you can't get out on training all that regularly, but ha- what parts have stalled and what parts have been benefited from the lack of, uh, you know, regular game time where obviously you mentioned not too long ago where your time was not, you know, your time's not focused on games. You have other time now to focus on other parts of scouting. Yeah, no, absolutely. Obviously, the on the field has been very limited, but the off the field and the alignment of our technical departments have been incredible by weekly uh, phone calls with uh, obviously from Steven Gerrard to Ross Wilson and to the entire academy staff, you know, sharing best practices, looking what they're looking for in players and really helping us build out our structure and giving our coach, Braden Cloutier and his entire staff, the opportunity to work closely with them and with a club, again, that has obviously a tremendous amount of resources and is putting a lot of effort into the youth development and into the first team and competing in Europe. It goes without saying, it's been an incredible experience for all of us. We're learning every single day, but it's also nice to see that they're asking us questions, how we're doing things and and they're very appreciative of our way of working. And that has been an added bonus. So again, so many benefits um, off the field that we have maximized and used the time wisely where we couldn't be on the field. And again, it's time to be back on the field. Obviously, uh, Glasgow Rangers is back on the field as well, too. So now we want to showcase. But we definitely, these last three months working together closely has significantly enhanced our technical setup and where we want to go. And I think it's also beneficial for Glasgow Rangers. Yeah, and I mean, I think I think it's easy to to assume that partnerships like these will obviously benefit um, the players and the recruitment within both teams. Um, but as far as coaching goes, you know, is there any exchange and uh, between the coaches of Orange County and Rangers in terms of 
maybe new approaches to the game and uh, just different ways of kind of coaching young players or or just different philosophies kind of flying around? Yeah, 100%. I think, look, if you look at Glasgow Rangers' history, obviously five years ago they were relegated uh, into the lower tier of, of the Scottish division, moved, them, uh, moved themselves back up to the absolutely top. But they have spent a lot of time and effort in really professionalizing and better the academy. And they currently have one of the best academies in Europe, uh, producing top players and competing on the absolutely highest level. So the knowledge they have had in the academy set up, how they work with their top talents, how, how due diligent they are in the recruiting process and lining out goals of these players is something we have significantly you know, benefited from. I think we already have a coaching staff that is led by Braden Cloutier that is obviously a first-class coach, but that is so willing to learn and improve on a daily basis. So for him to have access to obviously the Glasgow Rangers first team staff and also work in the academy setup and see how they're doing, it's been extremely beneficial for all of us. And again, these are some of the benefits of this partnership where really it's fully transparent. You know, there's nothing off limit. And we can ask questions, and they ask questions, and it's been an absolute joy uh, working together. Now, Oliver, I kind of want to shift the discussion here a little bit to some some big news recently for the club and uh, Brian Kayo. Uh, he just signed with German side Wolfsburg and uh, will play for the club's U23 side. I just have a couple questions here about that. How excited are you for him, and what does this say about Orange County SC? So, obviously, you have read a lot of a lot of reports and look, I will say this, um, our policy is we usually don't comment on players under the age of 18 when they move uh, to Europe. Uh, but obviously there's no secret that Brian's played for us last and where he's going. And in a matter of fact, uh, he's turning 18, uh, July 27. So you will definitely read a more follow-up story uh, of his journey. But again, look, what it basically proves uh, with Brian that this is a player that obviously had the interest from Europe. Uh, he felt that Orange County Soccer Club provides him the best uh, development before he can now officially move to Europe. I think he showed when he came to us. Uh, he ended up making the U17 World Cup roster. Uh, he competed daily in, a, in an atmosphere where he had to compete against top professional players on the highest level. And I think he just prepared him for the next step of course, uh, it's a great testament to everybody who's helped this development. And I think the fact that we've played a part in Brian's ongoing you know, pathway, and now he ends up in, in Europe in a top professional league, and to continue to go out and hopefully represent the U.S. and pretty soon on the highest level, I think validates what we're doing. And he also continues to show us that there are so many American talents and if developed the proper way and giving them the opportunity to showcase themselves at the right time and prepare them accordingly, that when they go over to Europe, they're as good as many of the top European talents and they will go make a significant difference uh, in, their, in their divisions. If you look now at all the young Americans that are doing really well in Germany, uh, it will be no different for Brian. I think Brian is a, is a very, very talented player who only get better. And we obviously are extremely proud of him. And we can't wait to continue to follow his uh, his development. When when you have players like Brian go over to Europe, it obviously brings a lot of a lot of cameras to the club. But when you talk to other youth players, I mean, do they recognize that? Do they is is this something that you can sell other players on, saying, "Look, be part of the journey here, where we can help you make that next step." And obviously, and that is making that next step and going to the biggest clubs in the world. Yeah, 100%. Look, we started this uh, project of developing these young players about three and a half years ago when James Keston uh, bought the team. Uh, we always felt there was a tremendous amount of talent in Orange County, uh, but obviously even more in the United States. We started it with Aaron Cervantes uh, at a 15-year-old at the hardest position. That was the goalkeeper. And Aaron Cervantes has gone in a very clear development plan when the first year he didn't play any games for us, but he obviously trained with us and developed significantly into then his second year, starting 12, 12 games for us, and obviously started the opening game this year for us. 
and is obviously in contention to start tomorrow night, even though we have a very senior veteran goalkeeper in there. So the pathway shows, but it was important to make sure we have these examples because a lot of people talking about developing and, and building a pathway, but they really don't follow through it. And then they ultimately end up playing just the senior players because they're worried about losing a game or giving a young player the opportunity. Aaron's story obviously helped us uh, with uh, recruiting Francis Jacobs. He helped us recruiting uh, with Diego Lopez. And I think most recently, after we uh, obviously worked with Brian Cayo, you saw we had signed Colby Henry uh, at age 16, who was one of the biggest talents in the United States uh, U16 uh, age bracket right now. And he's obviously was at a quality MLS club. But again, he saw what we've been doing with Aaron. He saw what we've been doing with Brian Cayo and everybody else that has been in our structure and that they're playing. And he felt that's the uh, place he wanted to be to continue to be developed over the next, you know, two years and then uh, be ready to move over to Europe. I think it was very clear. He recently played with the U.S. in England against England and they lost, I think, 4-1 or 5-1. And he realized the level of the top players in Eng uh, from the English national team that they were a step ahead of him. And it was eye-opening for him that he knew if he would just stay in his current structure where he competes with against 15 and 16 year olds, that he will not develop his full potential. And it was important for him to come into our structure where he obviously competes with professionals, has a talent manager, has a staff that works with him daily, not only on the field during our sessions, but also in the afternoons, educates him with video sessions, educates him with, uh, educates him with extra you know, technical sessions and prepares him really for the next step. So I think to answer your question, yes, it's very important that we're showing the success stories and look, Brian Kai is a big success story, but there's many more to come. And we were not stopping there because obviously we're having a club set up where this is part of our business structure. And we're looking forward to many more talents coming to us and moving many more talents over to Europe and beyond. Yeah, I mean, you touched on one of the players, uh, Diego Lopez, who we'll have the pleasure of speaking to in a little bit. Um, you know, what What about him? He kind of came in at the same time as, as Cervantes and, and Brian Kayo. So what about him kind of is sticking out so much that he's being pushed into the first team full now and kind of making match day squads? Well, you know, interestingly enough, Diego Lopez is obviously from Southern California, about 20 minutes from Orange County. And he's a player uh, that caught the eye of our head coach uh, a long time ago. Actually, our head coach, Brandon Cloutier, coached him uh, at the LA Galaxy way back. Uh, and he was on the same team as Aaron Cervantes. And actually not a very talented player in Cameron Harper, who now plays for Celtic. Um, there were the three players that Braden said, look, Oliver, these are the players that I believe have the talent, the mentality to really get going. And obviously Aaron signed with us. And even though we had good conversation with Diego, Diego at that point, very understandably, uh, chose the Atlanta MLS route. But I think it became fairly clear to him that he probably would not be given the opportunity uh, in Atlanta with the first team anytime soon, and that his development will be probably better in a club like us, that if when a young player is ready to play, you know, that he would give him these minutes. And I think you can ask Diego, obviously, after it's when you have him on the show, but I'm pretty certain that having Diego uh, will say the same thing, being in our structure, learning every single day, uh, high demands, but also rewards if you do what you need to do, I think are the, what he's been looking for. And we're excited to see how far Diego can go in our structure and hopefully beyond. Oliver, what, what's, I mean, what's, can you put some sort of stealing on, on Diego Lopez or even some sort of timeline? You know, Diego is 18, right? Uh, I believe uh, almost as we're 19. So, you know, he's ready to move on any time. Look, here's the reality, and this is not specifically about Diego. Not every player is guaranteed to go on to the next level, but he has to be, there have to be a few key elements that have to fit. One, of course, they need to have the talent. Two, they need to have the drive and the mentality to really go there and the characteristics to put in the work day in and day out. Being a professional player is not easy. There's ups and downs. Diego also has a great support system with his family, uh, which obviously has helped him. And I think it's great for him to be back home. Look, we value Diego. Uh, we feel he, there's a player in him that can go on to the next level. Look, about two years ago, I remember when Diego scored the game winner for 
the U-17, U.S. national team when they beat Brazil, and he had a very great pathway in front of him. Obviously, going to Atlanta, I think it didn't work out the way for him that he really wanted, but he's been back, and I've obviously been in trainings and see him there every single day, giving his absolutely hardest. So can I say what the ceiling is for Diego? No, it would be hard to judge. Diego's next step is to make sure he can compete for a regular spot with Orange County and prove his worth there. But at his age, there he has plenty of time left to continue to do what he does best and hopefully move on back to the absolutely highest level. Is that the MLS? Is that in Mexico? Is that in Europe? I think he'd be coming down to Diego, how far he really wants to take this, as it's definitely up for a lack of talent or mentality. Now, Oliver, uh, before we let you go here, we want to talk a little bit about Path to Glory. Now, listeners, if you haven't heard before, Orange County SC's match with Phoenix Rising at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern or 6 p.m. Pacific time on ESPN2 uh, will be a, a documentary called Path to Glory, which will be highlighting six youth international players, three from the U.S. and three from Scotland in their path to professional soccer. And Oliver, just like to get your take on this. Can you give us any insights uh, on, on what we're about to see on this documentary Thursday night? Oh, man, I'm telling you, it's special. The, the production and the quality and the professionalism of this documentary, I think, will blow people away. It truly gives you an insight of who we are, how we're interacting with our players, and follow the story of these six incredibly talented players that all come from different backgrounds, different upbringing, but how they are all joined together through soccer and this pathway into this partnership. I think when you will see the... Uh, the documentary, you you be you be a soccer fan, and you'll be like, "Wow, this is pretty special." Look, it's something we as a club are really proud of, and I think it will also show the American soccer fan what we're trying to build, and hopefully, will also encourage a lot of these younger players to to, to follow their dreams and say, "Hey, look, there are clubs that want to succeed to these young players on the absolutely highest level," and I think the path to glory documents this beautifully the ups and downs of our players and for it to showcase and premiere tomorrow right before our ESPN broadcast game is obviously a perfect timing. So again, guys, stay tuned. I don't want to give too much away, but it's a, uh, it's a very exciting, very exciting piece. And uh, I think it truly gives you an insight of who we are, who Glasgow Rangers are, who our players are and what we're trying to accomplish on the absolutely highest level. Oliver, I can't, I can't wait to check it out. Um, Last question here. Was there anything else you'd like to add? No, I would just like to add, hey, listen, uh, I actually want to give a shout out to you guys and all the soccer fans uh, of the USL and generally in America. It's been obviously a very difficult time for everybody, but I think that the game is back and it brings some joy into soccer fans' homes and in a time I think is a very, very uh important you know uh, piece at the moment and look if we at orange county soccer club can do our part of it where we obviously want to showcase our club and our talent but also feel a responsibility to make a difference in our community and now we have the opportunity to do so on, an, on a nationwide you know stage with our game and our documentary we take a lot of pride in that and we value that responsibility so i wanted to thank you guys for continuing to covering us continue to cover soccer and to make a difference because at the end of the day, we're all in this together. And the beauty of this game is if you can bring some joy in some very sad times, I think that's all we can strive for. And, and again, we're looking forward to working close with you in the future. And, and please feel like Orange County Soccer Club is part of your podcast and you guys' life as well. All righty. Well, I appreciate the time, Oliver. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Talk to you soon. We'd like to thank Oliver Vies again for his time uh, with that uh, wonderful interview. He just gave us a lot of a lot of good tidbits, a lot of good information there as it relates to youth development uh, in this country. And one player he highlighted in that interview was Diego Lopez. And we had the pleasure of speaking with Diego Lopez. He was kind enough to grant us a little bit of his time uh, yesterday. So here is our interview with Diego Lopez. Joining us now on the show is forward for Orange County SC. It is Diego Lopez. Diego, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Thank you guys for having me. D Diego, let, let's just begin with 
what we told Oliver, the elephant in the room, we're amidst a pandemic. Uh, how's life and training been, I guess, in quarantine over the last several months? Um, yeah, just these last several months have been challenging just since we've had to be away from the team and being together. We had a long preseason and we got together and had really good chemistry at that time. But yeah, just we try to stay fit as much as possible, especially with our staff trying to give us individual plans to be able to maintain our fitness levels and be able to compete when we come back. So yeah, it's been tough, but it's just what it is and we just have to adjust and we have to go out on the field and perform to our best of ability. Uh, so Diego, I mean, you know, aside from kind of keeping up with training and stuff, obviously everybody's had a, a ton of downtime. So I'm just curious, have you been have you been uh, cranking on a lot of FIFA uh, since uh, the pandemic kind of hit? Yeah, the pandemic definitely just gave me a lot of more free time. We've been watching film with, with the team as well on Zoom calls, but I've been playing video games and watching movies, just trying to get this pandemic, trying to go as much faster as possible, just trying to stay as active as possible. What about the communication with coaches? Has that been difficult? Um, yeah, communication with the coaches, it's been a little challenge just because we can't, we can't be coached by them on the field or one-on-one -on -one trainings for a long period of time. But we've been in contact with Zoom calls, meetings, just trying to analyze games and do it as much as possible to be, be in contact with the team and with the coaching staff. Now, Diego, how are you feeling ahead of your first game back? Like we said, it's been a five-month layoff. Uh, do you feel like you're physically ready to go uh, you know, ahead of the, the, the kickoff on Thursday night? Um, yeah, I feel ready. Um, the team, we've been working really hard since we got back like three weeks ago. Yeah, we, we feel ready. We've, we've fixed up some details that we've, we, as a team, feel like we needed to iron out and just – being ready to play Phoenix and the way they play, we just have to adjust and what we missed out and the time period that we missed out compared to them training, we just have to put it on the field and try as much as possible. And just we rely a lot on the staff and the scout reports and hopefully we could just bring the result home. D Diego, I mean, talk about the, the safety precautions that you've taken or the club has taken how, are, I mean, are, are you players, family, a little bit nervous getting it back out on the pitch amidst a, a pandemic? It's been pretty challenging just with all the protocols that we have to fall, but just little by little, we're getting used to it. And I mean, with the with the with the staff and the coaching staff putting in the 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 protocols, being able to stay safe and social distancing has been a little bit of security and safety and us as players we take that in and we feel a lot more safe and we perform better on the field without having that mentality of possibly getting the virus i mean we just try and go out every day with the mentality that we're going to be fine and just try and protect ourselves from others yeah diego i mean you know tomorrow um first game back um and you haven't yet made your full debut for Orange County. So I'm, I'm just curious, you know, as time kind of goes on, do you ever feel a little bit anxious, like kind of waiting for that first appearance, or are you just rolling with the punches and waiting for that day to come? Yeah, I've just been working as hard as possible on practice, trying to get uh, an appearance in my debut. Just when I come in, I'm just going to try and help the team as much as possible to be able to win. and just hopefully get the result. I mean, there's nothing really that I could do in my hand besides just perform and practice and get the coaches to realize that I could play. It's just the coach's decision at the end, and we have to win as a team and we lose as a team. So I'm glad that I'll have opportunities, and they've, they've told me. It's just a matter of time and the right timing when I feel ready. And right now, I feel like it's a perfect time with everyone that's been – out for so many months, I feel like we're going to be all equal as, as players as well. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you're back home in California. Um, you know, you had your time in, in Atlanta, but being back here, 
do you maybe feel a little bit more comfortable um, just in the environment that you're in and training and practicing every single day as opposed to, you know, being out in Georgia and playing with Atlanta? Yeah, for sure. I mean, being back home, it's it's a big positive for me just because I've been away for a year and a half, and especially I was 15 when I moved out. So, yeah, it was tough, but it definitely helped me mature on and off the field. But, yeah, coming back definitely gives me a, a lot of more confidence having my family around and especially I mean now that they can't really see the games at the stadium which is unfortunate but they're here at home that's going to be the support that I'm going to come back to and that's that's a big positive for me. Now Diego you had the chance to to go to Glasgow to train with Rangers can you talk about what that experience was like? Yeah that, that experience with Rangers was really breathtaking I mean the the facilities over there is second to none. I mean, the coaching staff was really welcoming, and I learned a lot over there with my time. A week and a half over there, it was it was a really fun experience that I had, and just being able to compare myself to European soccer players and the way they train and the way the coaching staff sees the players, it was it was really eye opening, and I really took all of that in, and I'm just trying to make the most out of it. Uh. Listeners, if you did not know, Dega will be featured as one of the players in the documentary Path to Glory. And, and Diego, what was your biggest takeaway uh, while you were in uh, Europe? My biggest takeaway in Europe, I mean, just the, the coaching staff and the, the drills that they do over there and how many times they train was, was really important for me. Just seeing how they, they work on themselves and as a team, they were really, really connected. And all the first team, all the age groups were all in one facility, which was really good because they, they're all close to each other and could see each other play and see them develop, which I really felt like was really important. So I just took as much in and just seeing the first team play. And it was a really good experience that I will never forget. And as far as, you know, coming back here and training, uh, have you, did you notice any, um like outstanding differences in the way you guys train like did they focus on certain aspects of the game more so than we do here or what was that kind of like yeah it was it was fairly similar but they rangers would focus a lot on uh technical stuff like midfielders would go out and do their own technical stuff forwards would spend a lot of time with their finishing and their their movements off each other which we also do here, but they, they like to focus a lot on their chemistry with their other players around them and just certain positions that they have. So, uh, Diego, you were, you were, you're obviously one of the featured players in the documentary Path to Glory. Uh, what, was, what was that like? What was it like being followed around by cameras? Uh, was, that, was that weird for you at all, just kind of being uh, the focal point of, of a documentary? It was a little weird at first just noticing the cameras following us around. But just as time went on and the the, the camera crew was really, really friendly. So it, we got used to it over time. But just following us around, it felt like we were really, really important in that time period. So it was, it was like a positive and calm. But, I mean, we just were on the field doing our thing. So we didn't really focus much on it besides just lunch and dinner and stuff like that. But... Yeah, definitely. It was it was something I won't forget, but it didn't bother me to the fullest either. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you were with Atlanta United, too, prior to joining uh, Orange County. And obviously, both sides want to develop younger players and kind of transition them into their first teams. Um, but do you sense there's more of a focus on that here in Orange County or maybe the pathway to kind of getting to the first team is a little bit smoother than it was uh, back in Atlanta? Yes, I believe that Orange County likes to focus a lot on their players, their younger the younger players, just because they have staff that dedicates themselves to developing the players and watching film, et cetera. So yeah, it feels a little bit smoother as of now with Orange County, just especially with the veterans in the team being a little bit more friendly and just giving you tips and feedback that you could take in and improve your game in. Now, Diego, uh, just a couple more questions here, but how how does it feel playing uh, for a team so close to your hometown? Yeah, playing in my hometown, it feels 
really good just having all these family members around that could go to the game at any time. But unfortunately, obviously, we can't because it's closed doors right now. But yeah, in the future, for sure, family members are going to be there at the game supporting, even friends. So it's it's a really big, really big positive for me, just having that support around me and old teammates that I've had in the past. It's also, it's really important to me. And I really take all of that in and it makes me feel a little bit more confident on the field as well. Uh Oliver Vies, he talked to us about his, his vision about getting young talent from Orange County to Europe. Is that vision what drew you to the club when you signed with them last September? No, the vision that the team had, I mean, they've always focused on their young core and just developing them and putting them at the next level. So that's one of the reasons I saw this team and I wanted to come over here, not just because it's a, a local team to me. Um, yeah, just their visions and their their goals with their younger players. It's, it's really, really eye opening for me, and it intrigued me. So I I saw this as an opportunity, and I hope to make the most out of it. And Diego, I mean, as far as um, your time with the youth national teams, you know, um, obviously there haven't been any camps because of the virus, and we're only just now starting to get back to club soccer. But have you been in contact with anybody from the youth national teams as far as coaches and kind of seeing what's ahead for you guys? I have not been too much in contact with them since I got I picked up an injury. I tore my hamstring back in Atlanta, when I was in Atlanta. So I didn't really hear much from them. But I've spoken to Aaron and I mean, just this virus really put a lot of delay into their, their training camps. But hopefully I could be a, called up to one of those and just try and make the most out of my opportunity again. Absolutely. Well, Diego, we appreciate your time uh, on, on this Wednesday evening. Sounds good. Sounds great. Big thank you to Diego Lopez and Oliver Vies. I think it is very fascinating to be a sports fan right now obviously with everything that's going on with the global game of soccer and obviously with the NBA MLB NHL but guys I, I think those were very truly fascinating uh, insights to what Orange County is doing and I, I think it's very exciting to see clubs small or large in this country really take on the task of developing world-class players yeah I mean I, I think Orange County is kind of you know, in an area where they're competing with two big MLS markets and uh, three, if you count San Jose, uh, just in California in general. Um, so being able to kind of pick out this youth development niche and and really build their own brand is going to help them a lot. And, you know, Stephen, it's it's actually refreshing to hear a club talk about this in U.S. soccer that, hey, our goal is to to d develop players and get them get them out of here, get them in, over to Europe, get them in, to Mexico, get them to MLS. I mean, look, MLS, you're never going to hear an MLS club admit that our goal is to get a player to Mexico or our, our goal is to take this player and get them over to Europe. You're never going to hear an MLS club admit that. And the fact that Oliver Vies and Orange County SC uh, are, admits that and owns it and is willing to embrace it, I think that's a great thing for the game in this country. Yeah, absolutely. And listeners, let us know at Unc Sam Soccer Pod. Go give a follow to the latest member of the Unc Sam Soccer Podcast, Justin Sosa. Follow him at Justin Sosa99. And Justin, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to say anything else or add anything else here. Yeah, no, I mean, um, like I said before, I'm, I'm just excited to be on the show um, to follow up as your third co host and to kind of just get the ball rolling between the three of us. There you go. I like the analogy. Get the ball rolling. Follow Mr. Jake Watroba at Jake Watroba at Stephen Jodder and for myself. And until next time.